So hi everyone, I welcome you all to my YouTube channel. So this is another video in the topic of construction management. You can check out the playlist of construction management for many many videos on this topic like related to tender, related to contracts and full process of tendering related to building, what not. You can find so many videos which will help you grow in your career uh, as well as uh, personally as well as professionally. So this video is all about tender. What is a tender? What is the difference between tender versus contract? We will be taking one very good example. I will be explaining you this concept very clearly. There are many videos which will misguide you. But still, I will say that after watching this video, you will not have any doubt related to tenders, tenders versus contracts and what are the various types of contract, what are their pros and what are their cons like negotiated tendering, open tendering and selective or which is also called as limited tendering. Okay, so without any further delay, let's get started. Now see, I will take one very good example to explain you the difference between tender and contract and through that only we will be learning the definition of tender also. Okay, see, for example, there is one company, okay, this is one company and this company is let's say ABC company. This company is wanting one employee or maybe let's say one senior engineer for execution of some particular works. Let's let's forget that it's a construction company or what. It's a general company who is hiring one particular, there is one vacancy only and it has almost interviewed 50 candidates for that position and 50 candidates will be brought down to only one employee. They are looking for only one employee or one engineer out of the 50 candidates that they have interviewed. Now what happens is, these 50 candidates will be interviewed and now suppose let's say based on the criteria, their uh, qualifications, experience and other criteria, they have finalized one particular employee. Now this particular employee is selected. They have told, they have called him and they have told that he is selected to be a part of this company. Now what happens is they have given one offer letter to this employee. This is one offer letter, OL, offer letter. This is one offer letter that has been given to the employee by this company. This offer letter mentions all the terms and conditions that you have to minimum work for, let's say, three months. They have told the employee in this offer letter that he has to minimum work for the company for three months. If he leaves the company before three months, then he will has to pay some particular bond amount or something like that they have told in the offer letter. Also, they have told the uh, the, his uh, salary status, everything, his perks and allowances that he will be getting, everything he has told in the offer letter and they have also, company has also told that you have to serve a notice period of this and this particular period before you give your resignation and all. Okay, so now this offer letter is nothing but a tender document. See, he, this employee has to sign this offer letter. So before he is signing this offer letter, before he signs, till then this particular document will be a tender document. Out of all the 50 candidates, this one employee has been selected and he has got this offer letter which he has yet not signed. So this is the tender document for him which says all the terms and conditions of his uh, stay in the company. As soon as the company, as soon as the employee signs this offer letter, this offer letter becomes a contract. See, in construction, the contract will be a legally binding document. That means if, if some terms and conditions are not followed, then they can take it to the court also, legislator also. But here, since it's not a, it's not a stamp paper and all, it's a general uh, normal papers only. So maybe uh, it will not go to the court. It's not a legally binding document, but definitely it is a binding document that he has to follow the terms and conditions. If he doesn't follow, then the, comp then the company might not give, the, give him experience certificate or their salary slips also. So, such things can happen. Okay. After the person employee who has been selected, he signs this offer letter, it becomes a contract document. Similarly, in the construction industry also, whenever a certain uh, project is to be bought up, the company or the organization which wants that facility, they will release one tender document. This tender document will contain all the contract conditions. Along with it, it will contain the drawings, specifications, BOQ, etc. So this will be a tender document. When this tender, when they, when the contractors quote their rates and one, one contractor is finalized for executing the work, then they will give this offer 
to that particular company but still it will remain a tender document until and unless the contractor is signing that particular document once the tender document is signed with the quoted rates with the proper terms and conditions then it becomes a contract document so in brief if i summarize everything then we can say this is a tender and this is a contract so both documents are the same documents nothing much changes apart from the fact that tender will not have the final negotiated value but contract will have the final negotiated value between the client as well as the contractor documents will be same but it will be called as a tender document before signing and after signing it will become a contract document okay i hope this fact is clear to you now apart from that tender document is common for all contractors whosoever is participating whosoever is bidding it is common for all the contractors like every particular contractor will have the access to the tender document whosoever has bidded in it but this is only for the selected contractor or l1 contractor okay apart from that this is not legally binding if you have awarded the uh, particular job to a certain contractor until and unless he signs that particular tender it will not be legally binding that means if the contractor backs out even after getting the job but before signing the contract document then in that case it will not go to the court just the fact that his emd earnest money deposit will be forfeited no legal action can be taken against him that's it it just he will have some monetary loss but if after signing the document he backs out then it's legally binding okay so i hope it's clear to you all and it does not contain the final negotiated rates it will just contain the quoted rates or maybe something like that but it contains the final negotiated rates it will mention clearly that the contract is signed between the client and the contractor for a contract value of 100 crore rupees that's it okay so i hope this is clear to you all so after it becomes a contract the tender document after it becomes a contract it will become legally binding that means the contractor will be bound to perform as per the specifications and as per the quality and safety standards mentioned in the so called tender document so i hope now you understand this okay next part now we will move to what are the various types of tenders the very first type of tendering is negotiated tendering now see what happens is in negotiated tendering first of all i'll write some points the client invites the contractor of his choice for a project to submit his price okay what happens in negotiated tendering the client suppose this is a client he wants one project to be executed then what he will see like for example if it's a uh, maybe let's say some uh, building project he knows that lnt is very good at performing all the building projects so what he will do the client knows he has some good reputation with lnt he has uh, faced lnt in past projects and the lnt has proved that its quality and safety standards and ultimate finishing and all is very good so he will say he will call lnt he will invite lnt to bid for this particular job and he will only invite one single contractor which is larson and tubro construction since he has some past experience with this company which was quite good so lnt will have the opportunity to analyze and to quote the rates for this project and submit his final bid to the client let's say he says lnt says that i am able to complete the project in 100 crore rupees now what will happen the client will have some negotiation with the with, with the lnt and he will tell no no you can just manage your cost here and there and 
he will just request or maybe he will tell some ways through which he can reduce the cost and he will say okay final price you can quote is 95 crore and lnt also agrees so this is the this is something which is called as negotiated tendering because here the client has invited only one single contractor who has bidded for this particular project and after some negotiation the job is awarded to that particular contractor that's it okay now see what happens this particular type of tendering is usually choose, chosen for specialized works okay specialized works or maybe some extension packages like see specialized means suppose there is one contractor one very big contractor which is quite good with some some certain kind of activity like for example some MEP work has to be done for a building some building has done already its, its structure and finishing work now some particular client wants any particular contracting agency to do only the MEP work so whichever contracting agency will be quite good with MEP so the contract uh, client knows like for example XYZ company is good with MEP works so he will only invite XYZ company and he will tell the particular company to code for the MEP works and after negotiation he will give the work to XYZ because he knows that XYZ will give me good quality for MEP okay similarly for extension packages for example uh, you already have one suppose let's say some metro project is going on and some particular stretch has been given to ABC company and suppose this particular stretch is now extended to some maybe let's say XYZ kilometers so since ABC has already executed some particular stretch and it's just a small extension of this particular packet so they will ask only ABC company to code for this rest of the uh, XYZ kilometers and after some negotiation they will give the job to ABC company only okay so this is what happens in the negotiated tendering now see this usually happens this type of tendering is uh, usually observed in the case where time is a constraint see why why this will be followed only when time is a constraint because the complete process of tendering will take a huge lot of time hell lot of time because they have to uh, call for the contractors for the uh, technical bidding financial bidding in some cases only financial bidding is there but so many contractors will be participating so uh, maybe uh, filtering those contract contractors out and analyzing their bids and all it's a very very tedious process very time consuming process so if, if time is a constraint and money is not that particular big constraint then in that case they will go for clients will go for negotiated tendering usually rich contractors only or uh, sorry rich clients only go for negotiated tendering because see if only one contractor will be called then they will quote their price there will be no competition at all the client the contractor will have his choice to quote whatever rates he want although after some negotiation the rates will drop but still there will be no competition so the contractor will have an edge over this and they can make their good profits also okay so what is the advantage of this particular type of tendering is that the contract goes well why the contract goes well the complete execution and everything goes well because the client already has some past relationship and past experience with the contracting agency since he knows that this company has already performed well in the past projects so overall there are no arbitrations there are no uh, much conflicts between the contractor and the client so usually the contract will go well in the case of negotiation tendering because the client only calls for the contractors with whom he has good experiences okay then apart from that what is the disadvantage of this type of contract which i have already told you then uh, there is no competition the price can be unusually high also because there is no competition for that particular company because only that particular company has to bid okay so this is called as negotiated tendering now moving on to the next type of tendering which is nothing but your open tendering as the name suggests it's open that means open for all usually in the case of government clients what will happen is first of all the client will advertise the project publicly the project is advertised very publicly how is it advertised through newspapers through journals through uh, online websites all these all these are the very common mediums through which the nit will be published notice inviting tender through which the contractors throughout the country or throughout the state will come to know that such a such project is coming and estimated value is this much estimated duration is this much 
एंड दिस इज द स्कोप ऑफ वर्क करके ठीक है नेक्स्ट थिंग इज इट परमिट्स इन्यूमरेबल कॉन्ट्रैक्टर्स टू बिड Now see, since it's a it's released on the public platform, contractors to bid. All the contractors who feel that they are capable of doing the job, they will come and they will bid like anything. Okay. In such contracts, EMD is usually submitted. Okay, contractors what they have to do along with submitting the tender, their quoted rates, they have to submit one. something called as emd earnest money deposit which is nothing but a bit security bond kind of thing which will be forfeited if the contractor backs out after winning the job okay so they have to submit the emd now what happens is there is some very minimum eligibility criteria see if they will not keep any minimum eligibility criteria then they will receive n number of applications but still there is some very minimum eligibility criteria which the contractors have to fulfill mostly they will be fulfilling this criteria but apart from this minimum eligibility criteria what they can do is clients what they can do they can choose to have one technical bid and one financial bid separately so this technical bid will be a kind of technical evaluation of the contracting agency whether he is capable to complete the job or not like they will ask for some uh, quality specifications their past experience certificates their annual turnovers their staff hierarchy structural organization organization of the structure of their organization and such technical things they will ask and if the if the contracting agency fulfill all the criteria then only they will open the financial bid of the eligible contracting companies only but this is not necessary in open tendering mostly they will only go for financial bid they will not ask technical bids so because so many contractors will be coming here so the basic disadvantage or the very common disadvantage is lack of time no sorry not lack of time wastage of time because of so many contractors participating the client will have a huge difficulty in analyzing the bids of every particular company since so many small companies will also be coming to bid so it will lead to huge wastage of time so it is only adopted where time is not at all a constraint there is no emergency at all okay then it takes a lot of resources it takes a lot of resources so many resources will be used like they will the contracting agency will also be consuming so many resources so many staff and all similarly for the client organization also they will have to work out a lot of time in analyzing the bids and awarding the contract okay another thing is because so many contractors will be coming so what they will have they will have this mentally feeling that since there are so many contractors i will have very less chances of winning this particular project like let's say suppose 70 contractors have participated so we we'll think some particular contractor might think that among 70 i may not even get a chance to win the project so whatever price the contractors will feel like they will quote that particular price only like jaane de karke okay so in that case the bidding will not be very competitive like the contracting agencies will not be analyzing the rates very properly and they might if they if they uncertainly will if if they win the project by chance then in that case since they have not worked out their rates properly so the, there will be many conflicts between the contracting agency as well as between the client okay so this is very very important disadvantage of this next is what are the advantages of this so now see one more thing is uh now now moving on to the advantage so advantage might be see there are several number of contracting agencies so they can choose the best agency also because they are getting a very good pool of contracting agencies so the thing is that many good contractors will also be participating in this particular bid so they can they will have this thing that some good contractor also might be chosen which which they have not interacted earlier with okay like there may be some agency with which the client has not any experience in the past but that particular agency comes into picture in this particular forum and they get to interact with new agency which has very good prices also okay another advantage might be that they may also find a very very low bid also it might be suspiciously uh, suspiciously low also but genuinely low prices can also come out because there are so many contracting agency who will be quoting their rates okay now moving on to the next type of tendering which is nothing but your selective or limited tendering
as the name suggests it's limited like open was open to all limited is limited to some certain number of contractors so what happens is one pre qualification is done to select the contractors what will happen now the tender document will only be issued to the contractors who qualify for this job there will be some pre qualification what is pre qualification you can check out the playlist of mine for this construction management i have made one detailed video on the pre qualification of contractors so in pre qualification the contractors will have to submit their technical details like their annual turnover their star strength which i told you in the uh, uh, this uh, open tendering also no but in open tendering it was not mandatory that the client will do so but in selective tendering pq is mandatory the contractors will have to submit their technical bits which will be evaluated and only if they are selected only if they are eligible then only their financial bid will be done okay so pq will be done and see either this is possible or the other case can be only selected contractors will bid like the client may call only some limited number of contractors to bid for this particular job irrespective of their pre qualification okay this can also be the case next thing is this is usually adopted for the projects which have high contract value like very big projects like 2000 crores 1000 crores high contract value and the projects which have high risk because they do not want to play with the uh, project they don't want to invite hell lot of contractors who will bid like unnecessary low value or they will not uh, ponder to the quality and safety standards so they will only invite some reputed contractors who are quite good okay then the construction is difficult in that case also they will go for selective bid selective tendering because they will only invite some good contractors who have done some good projects in the past okay now what is the advantage advantage here is highly competitive prices because the number of bidders will be very less as compared to the open tendering but relatively more as compared to the negotiated tendering okay so this is a very important disadvantage now uh, one disadvantage small disadvantage although it's that pre qualification and all might take some time okay so this is a small disadvantage so i hope you understood the complete concept of tendering how is it different from a contract and what are the various types of tendering like selective tendering which is also called as limited tendering then open tendering negotiated tendering so i hope you understood everything and like the video also subscribe to the channel if you are new here and again i'll suggest you to check out other videos which i have made on the topic of tender contracts and some billing related side videos also so enjoy the video and yeah thank you everyone